thank you all for coming so early today. Um, I'm Emily, and I'm going to share with you a bit more about a project at Airbnb uh, we're working on called Open Homes. In order to understand Open Homes, it's important to understand a bit about where it came from. In October of 2012, Hurricane Sandy hit New York City. Large sections of, Manhattan, of southern Manhattan were submerged, hotels uh, were overflowing, and tens of thousands of people were forced to leave their homes. One of our hosts, pictured here, Shell, reached out to us with a really great idea. She wanted to offer a spare bedroom in her home for free on the Airbnb platform for people that were affected by the storm. So Shell's email to us kicked off a 24-hour engineering hackathon to create a feature for people to donate their homes on Airbnb. This feature has now evolved into a dedicated platform, now it's called Open Homes, which provides displaced people with that which we've been providing to travelers for years, which is a place to call home. So today, Open Homes has expanded beyond housing for those displaced by disasters to also include refugees and asylum seekers who need short-term housing when they're arriving in new communities, as well as those who are seeking medical treatment far from home. What started with one woman's idea in New York City has now become an effort to house 100,000 people over the next five years. So why short-term shelter? When it came to evaluating where we could have the biggest impact, we asked ourselves, what are Airbnb's unique assets and how can we leverage those for good? The answer was that we have this incredible community of empathetic hosts, and we also have this global technology platform that's designed for short-term stays. But for us, hosting is just the beginning. What we're also excited about is the potential of the connections that are formed between hosts and guests during these stays, and that those connections can be part of the broader journey of integration or recovery. Um, what we're really interested in is that in this increasingly digital and polarized world, we want to bring people actually together and foster a sense of belonging. So it helped to walk you through just a little bit about how the Open Homes platform works. So first we partner with leading humanitarian organizations and government agencies to leverage their expertise, cage, case management, and support in making Open Homes a possibility. The organizations we work with are committed to helping their beneficiaries find long-term housing and uh, support services. We help to provide short-term housing that fills a critical gap. So for example, when an asylum seeker first arrives in a country and doesn't yet have a place to live. In addition to working with our nonprofit partners, we're also recruiting and partnering with hosts. Now these are everyday people who are willing and excited to host newcomers in their community. Some of our hosts are long-standing Airbnb hosts who've been on the platform for years and bring expertise hosting people from around the world. Others are brand new to, to Airbnb and are hosting exclusively for the Open Homes program. So how does a match happen in Open Homes? So first, a prospective host is going to list their extra space or their home on our platform, describe the space so that agencies can make an appropriate match to a specific need. A nonprofit representative, oops, Sorry. Well, a nonprofit representative will then meet, uh, reach out to a host and arrange to book a stay. And then once a host accepts a reservation, they can start preparing for the guest's arrival. Hosts and guests have a lot of freedom to uh, figure out how much they want to connect depending on the needs in the stay. And there are opportunities for hosts to become even more involved. For example, having meals together, showing newcomers around a community, or even connecting them to their larger network of friends. What you're seeing here is just the basic process of what a nonprofit agency goes through in order to book a zero dollar free stay on open homes. Um, this looks very familiar to any of you who may have used Airbnb before. But what's not as visible is how we're extending our core technology in order to give special access to free homes. And of course, agencies can also connect with hosts as part of this process and ask questions to ensure that the best possible match is made. So while it's not the main focus of today, but it is very relevant to the theme of climate-based displacement, Open Homes works a little bit differently on our disaster displacement side. So because of the urgency of these cases, it allows individuals affected by a disaster to book directly with an open homes host. This is a still shot, but it's of um, an internal tool that we use that allows us to mark geographic, geographic areas determined through our operations team and local emergency management. So we can actually manipulate these borders in real time and message our community to make sure that we are connecting those in the affected areas to those that are willing to host in safe zones. We can also monitor and respond in real time, for example, if the path of a storm or a wildfire changes. Stepping back to look at just where our program is now. Since 2012, 
Airbnb in our larger community has responded to over 300 disasters worldwide. Additionally, our hosts have provided housing for 15,000 guests, and those guests have come from over 52 countries. There are still, however, a lot of questions we have about how this will continue to work and to scale. And I'd like to walk you through a couple of these questions that we're actively trying to answer right now. As a researcher for the team, I'd also like to tell you a little bit about how we answer these questions and show you our methods. So this last year, our team has conducted major fieldwork trips for our refugee-related work to Vancouver, Paris, Athens, and then right after the summit, we're heading to Amman, Jordan. We also have smaller research projects that are happening in various cities throughout the United States. But of course, we want our fieldwork to be deeply international, so this is only the beginning for us. On our humanitarian team, we have a commitment that everyone goes to the field and conducts on-the-ground research. So engineers, designers, data scientists, customer support, and operation managers. Everyone is speaking with folks in their homes and in their places of work to better understand how they're making sense of the tools that we're building and so that we can listen to the stories and feedback they have to share with us. This commitment to go to our users, it really goes back to the early, the early days of Airbnb, when our co-founders were encouraged to go out and see in person how people were using the tool. And today, we have a commitment to design our tools with the communities that we hope to serve rather than for them. So in order to get everyone in the team on a sort of human-centered research mindset, we've created a, a number of simple internal tools. This is one example. It's a guide, and it's an easily shareable resource that people can use along with trainings to really be able to conduct quality field research. So there's a number of challenges we're trying to solve. I'm going to quickly walk through just two that we're thinking about very actively right now. The first one is designing for trust. Central to Airbnb's larger mission is this core concept of trust. The idea of opening up one's home to a stranger was pretty radical about 10 years ago, and now thanks in part to Airbnb, it's an increasingly common practice. But with open homes, however, the challenges are different and the stakes are higher. So we're working with people for whom inviting a displaced person into their home to host is a completely new idea. And at the same time, some of our guests have never used Airbnb, or the idea of staying with a stranger in their home might be different. So for these reasons, we need to build trust into this platform from the beginning for everyone involved. During recent field research in Vancouver and Paris, we first wanted to dig into this concept of trust a bit more deeply. We wanted our participants' feedbacks on some of the things that we're already doing to create trust. So for example, we currently offer a set of screenings and checks we do 24-7 customer support for everyone in open homes, and we also offer a $1 million host guarantee should any damages happen while on the stay. But we also want to understand gaps in trust that weren't currently being addressed by our product. So I want to offer just one really simple example. This was that when uh, we talked to hosts, they weren't always exactly clear who was requesting a booking on behalf of the guest. So as a result of this feedback, we worked on incorporating visual signals into our product. You see up there on the right-hand the right -hand side. Um, and this really can show the host, specifically in, in markets such as Paris, where a lot of our nonprofits are smaller, that the people reaching out to them are trusted partners of Open Home, and this is, in fact, a legitimate request. At the same time, we worked with agencies to develop out best practices so that then when they reach out to hosts, um, they can set clear expectations and establish a relationship of trust from the start. We know there's so much more to learn in this area, but we're really uh, excited to continue to work on this as we grow. So another area we're committed to is connection and thinking through how we can build tools to enhance this. So one research tool that we've developed internally is something we like to call the 360 journey. And essentially this 360 journey is just taking a single case study and diving deep and understanding it from the perspective of all the people involved. So in this case, it could be the hosts, the guests, and the agents that were involved. Um, we use this tool to understand the individual experiences of each party, but also how they intersect and how they may diverge. So using this 360 approach, we looked at cases where open home connections were really deeply rooted. And what I want to tell you about right now is the case of Matisse, Victor, and Moomin, which is right here in Paris. Um, so Victor and Matisse hosted Moomin originally for one month at their office here in Paris. Um, but the stay went so well and they, they developed such a friendship that Matisse ended up offering to host Moomin in his home for a year. It was, really, it was really a special experience to be able to interview these hosts in person and just to feel the emotion of that connection come through. So for example, when Matisse was telling me about Moomin securing his own apartment and moving out, 
He actually got tears in his eyes as he was thinking through how excited he was for Moomin to take that next step in his journey, but also the sadness of losing his companionship on an everyday basis. Um, but even after Moomin moved out, they used these really creative approaches to stay in touch. So for example, they used to host weekly dinners with Moomin, and they also created a WhatsApp group that connected not only Victor and Matisse, but a group of their larger network of friends. So I think at some point it was over 40 people to kind of follow along and support Moomin in his journey. And on Moomin's side, he felt that their connection <clears throat> was definitely one of extending his family. He told us that it felt inclusive and they could celebrate milestones together, such as France winning the World Cup or when he got his new job. We also want to learn, however, when things don't go as well. So this is an example of a case study from Vancouver and where hosts Chris and Mary hosted Mustafa and Zena and their kids for a month. So while the initial month-long stay went well, um, both parties independently told us that after the stay happened, they drifted apart, that there was an opportunity at first to try to connect, but eventually they just lost touch, despite the fact that they wanted that connection to continue. So after we returned from the field, we brought back all of these 360 journeys, and our team of designers began storyboarding out what are all the possibilities of ways that we could start to think through how to design for sustained connection after a stay had ended. So this is one example of what a storyboard thinking through this might look like. And then here's just one early design concept that we're exploring that they came up with. And this actually was really based on feedback that we got specifically from our partners here in Paris. And they pushed us to think about from the very beginning of the search, could we in some way bring forward the actual host and the, the human dynamics of connection and not be quite so heavily focused on the space of the listing itself? So this is one thing that we're exploring right now to try to see if this might help agencies and guests from the very beginning, search, know more about hosts, and set up long-lasting relationships. In addition to building products, it's really important to let you know that our team actually spends a lot of time and effort doing on-the-ground work to ensure that Open Homes is a success. So this work right now involves things such as organizing meetups, and these are meetings where prospective hosts can come, connect with the community, ask questions, as well as um, we have a team of folks that work directly with our agency partners and make sure that they have all the resources they need in order to use our tool successfully. We want to show just um, one film of a stay that went really well, and this is to highlight what we believe could be the impact of a platform like this. People lost their relatives, their family, their friends, but also their homes. That was like, I have the space, let them come over. The day we come to Rome, he also smiled to me, we greet each other, we're very nice. My life is already safe. I've been really very reserved at the beginning, but his openness to the outside world, that really made it easier for me to have real conversations. If not to me, to who could he really tell his story? She treats me like her own son. I wanted to give something back, and I think I got much more back myself. <laughs> so we're very inspired by the stories that we're hearing so far, and we're really excited for the opportunity to build these learnings into the next version of Open Homes. We imagine that we share some of the same questions and challenges that many of you in this room do, and we're really excited about the potential to learn from each other and the opportunity to answer these questions together. So thank you so much for having us.